like to call the Lee County Board of Education to order tonight. I want to welcome everybody here that's been uh, in the gathering. I also want to uh, call for a moment of uh, silence. Amen. Let's stand as we do the Pledge of Allegiance. At this time, I want to uh, welcome everyone, all of our guests. I want to welcome the uh, Sanford Herald and um, whoever is uh, uh, Miss Olivia, Lori, welcome here. And all of our guests, I want to welcome you to, to uh, the board meeting tonight. Uh, we only have one public comment, and uh, it's uh, Mata Underwood. Miss Underwood, can you come and tell us what you have? Okay. <laughs> you have three minutes. Okay. Thank you. After reading tonight's Board of Education agenda, I was responding to see an appointment approval item for Central Carolina Community College Board of Trustees. According to the public record, there is only one applicant. Since I did not see any solicitation for applicants um, on this position and I found no evidence that it was publicly advertised, I would like to present my name and resume for the board consideration tonight. I am qualified to serve as CCCC trustee, having bachelor's and master's degrees in mechanical engineering. My work experience in private industry and government and I have taught middle and high school mathematics and physics, both in the US and overseas. I know what the workplace needs and what employers expect. Additionally, I have served on the CCCC board for four years in 2012 to 2016. I diligently sought to learn the details of what happened, what was happening, and how to best go forward in the interest of students and the school. Since I have retired, I have time to serve diligently on the CCCC board, and I'm experienced. I attended all full board meetings and all committee meetings. For three years, I served on the chair of the curriculum committee. I attended lots of special events in all three counties, including professional society induction ceremonies, basketball games, special classroom demonstrations, by the students, and I celebrated their achievements at their graduations with them. I embraced the student needs and programs of all three counties, including financially donating to various programs, and have continued to do so. I bought products made by the inmates of Harnett Correctional Institute, such as this. I um, attended the grand opening of CCCC's Dunn Center. I have eaten at the Pittsburgh Culinary Student Lunch Cafe thing, toured the organic gardening um, facility, and even participated in the foundation's rabbit run fundraiser in throughout downtown Pittsburgh. And I didn't mind wearing it either. Um, I have also worked in the best interest of the faculty and staff both with the State Community College Board and the NC Legislature on a number of occasions. I have done all of this at my own expense. I realize that the college employees may not give a recommendation for who sits on their board, but you can look at the Sanford Ms. Herald. Underwood. Thank you. Ms. Underwood, that's time. And you can thank you. take a look at the thank you notes they gave me when I rolled off the board. I have a passion for our college, and I would ask you to select me as the 
recommendation for trustee by the joint decision of Harnett, Chatham, and Lee County Boards of Education. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Underwood. At this time, I would like um, a motion. Um, I, I would like the Code of Anti Ethics uh, to be read by uh, Ms. Bowen. The Code of Ethics for School Board Members, Policy 2120. The board recognizes that collectively and individually, all members of the board must adhere to an accepted code of ethics in order to improve public education. Members of the Lee County Board of Education should avoid conflicts of interest and appearance of conflicts of interest as we handle the work of the board. Avoid, conf I'm sorry, I jumped my line. Avoid the solicitation and or acceptance of gifts in return for advice or assistance on matters concerning the operation of the business of the board. Avoid the misuse of public funds, avoid the misrepresentation or falsification of facts, and avoid making confidential information public. The board accepts the code of ethics established by the North Carolina School Boards Association. Thank you. Vision statement. Lee County Schools, in partnership with the community, will provide challenging learning experiences for students in a safe and supportive environment. We are committed to academic excellence, technological innovations, social responsibility, and lifelong learning. Our success will be demonstrated by the achievement of our students and their position participating participation and their positive participation in society. Thank you. At this time, uh, I will ask for the uh, motion for the approval of the agenda of 6-12-2018. Mr. Chair, I move that we approve the agenda of 6-12-2018. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 The motion is approved. The minutes of uh, approval of the minutes of 5-8, 5-30, and 6-4. Mr. Chair, I make a motion we approve the minutes of May 8th, May 30th, and June 4th, 2018. We have a motion. We need a second. Second. We have a second. A point of clarification, Mr. Chair. Yes. Um, can we clarify the voting record as indicated under the um, administrator contracts minutes? That would be the minutes of May 30, 2018. The two-year administrator contracts are those. Is that voting accurate? Yes. Okay. The only reason I ask is that's not what I that's not what I had been told when I I clarified the issue. Okay. That's all I need. I just point of information. I want to make sure that the it was a it was a four one vote. Correct. Okay. That's what. I, Okay. Okay, that's just, that it was different from what I had been told. Thank you. Okay. At this time, uh, we have a motion. We have a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 The motion is approved. The, uh, at this time, I will go ahead and do the chairman's report. We have so much um, the, in the last uh, few weeks, uh, all kinds of uh, programs and Banquets and graduation, elementary, kindergarten, high school, all kinds of uh, uh, graduation. And we were running uh, from pole to pole, <laughs> Hector Skechter, to make sure that we attend as much as we can. And I uh, just want to uh, congratulate all of our graduates and uh, wish them uh, the best of luck in their next endeavor. I also want to uh, uh, say uh, that... Uh, to all of our staff for a good job they've all done to prepare these students. And and uh, this time I know that uh, some of them are still working, but they deserve the uh, vacation that they will be getting pretty soon. So I just want to congratulate all of uh, all of our staff and um, employee on that. And uh, just want to thank you for the good job you all have done to end the, uh, the school year. We're hoping that uh, you will be rested very well and come back uh, in the fall to help us out again. At this uh, time, I have uh, some announcements to make. Uh, last week, I, uh, I have a, a, 
uh, I said last week, last uh, board meeting, we talked about the uh, board retreat. We have a, we will be having a board retreat on the 31st of uh, July, 2018, on Tuesday. 31st of July, 2018, on Tuesday, it will be a, uh, it will be from 9 to 12 in the morning. Also, uh, Ms. Womack make, made an inquiry about master board uh, program for the for the school board, and uh, I dug into it for the board of education. And when I dug into it, it will be a, uh, it will be four hours each day. Uh, it will be five sessions and it will be four hours every day, and it will cost the Board of Education 1,400 plus, uh, plus uh, the trainer's fee, expense, travel, hotel, and meal. So when I calculated that, it will be about $9,000. So the Board will have to uh, sit down and table that what they want to do to move forward. I, uh, to move forward with that, it will be four days, five sessions, four hours a day, so it will be a whole week, probably. And it will cost $1,400 plus uh, trainer's fee, hotel expense, meal, and um, travel. So so that's the um, investigation I've done, and it will take place if we decide to do it right at the uh, central office. The Mr. next one. Um, I'm sorry, Mr. Chair, may I make a, just a comment on that? And I would think it w if the board was going to do this master training, perhaps we should wait until um, the beginning of ne the next calendar year, just thinking that this board may reshuffle with the election. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you don't want to put $9,000 on the table on a board that may not still be seated mm -hmm. on this board at that time. So. Uh, you know, it might be something we want to look into, but book for, say, January or sometime of next year. I, uh, I agree with that. Yeah. So that's something that we, uh, we, should, we should look at. And another cost-effective way that I think if we even have to do that is when we go to the uh, board of, uh, uh, what do you call it, National School Board Association. I've uh, taken the class there before, and then we can, you will be there for at least three, four days, and you can attend the class, make it your main priority if that's what you want to do. But at the same time, there was an inquiry, and I have to uh, do something with it, so I did my investigation. So we'll table it, and uh, we can discuss it further uh, later. At this time, uh, last uh, board meeting, I asked uh, uh, the board uh, people who want to be uh, representing us at the legislative, uh, I will at this time uh, at the, at the le uh, legislative uh, in Raleigh. At this time, uh, school board association uh, legislative committee. So at this time, um, I talked to Lynn about it, and he said he's, uh, he wants to do it. So uh, I will nominate. Uh, uh, I will nominate at this time. Uh, Dr. Smith, if uh, if we have a second, second. Excuse me. We have a nomination. We have a we have a sec. We have a second. Yes. Yeah. All in favor, say aye. 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 So, uh, Lynn Smith will be representing us uh, at the uh, legislative committee of the school board association. He's been there before, so he will just go back and do what he used to do for us before. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. So uh, that concludes my uh, my report. At this time, I will go to the chairman's report, a uh, superintendent's report. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chair. I'd like to ask uh, Dr. Johnny Waller to come forward, please, uh, for the uh, Clean School of the Month Award. We had five third place at 96%, two second place at 97%. Pardon me, Dr. Waller. Will you tilt that microphone? It looks like folks in the back are giving us the, a oh, look. Is that better? <laughs> it's better. <laughs> and our winner for May was Lee County High School with 98%. 
<laughs> Mr. Ross, if you come forward. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, all the credit goes towards uh, the custodians and the staff here at Lee County High School with 13 individual buildings to take care of. They do an awesome, awesome job. Uh, Ms. Francis is here representing the custodial staff. Uh, the individuals of Mr. Johnson, Mr. Boggs, Mr. Wise, Mr. Taylor, Mr. Richardson, Mr. Marable, of course, Ms. Francis and Ms. Shields. They do a phenomenal job, but again, thank you. Thank you for what you do, and uh, we appreciate that. Uh, we hope you can keep it for a longer time. <laughs> Congratulations, Mr. Ross. Um, Superintendent's Extra Effort Award tonight. Um, as I've said a couple times before, this is bittersweet. Um, we have an individual we're recognizing tonight who has been a great part of our Lee County Schools family uh, over the last few years and has done an outstanding job. Um, I'm going to ask her to come forward, then I'm going to say a few words about her. Um, Zeely Lewis with College Advising Corps, who's been stationed at Lee County High School. You might recognize her from giving the um, staff. Um, speech at Lee County High School graduation the other night, did a fine job with that. But uh, when she's not giving a speech somewhere, let me give you a little background on what she does and what she means to our school district. Um, she obviously has a great um, compassion for students and helping students to not only succeed in school, but to guide them about where they end up going to post-secondary education. And uh, she's done an awesome job here at Lee County High School from helping students to pursue what is of interest to them uh, for their post-secondary plans, to filling out the FAFSA, which was a great joke the other night, I thought, <laughs> and, and everything in between. And um, I, I can't tell you how much uh, work she does to ensure that students get those opportunities and scholarship opportunities and and all the wonderful things that come along with uh, applying and getting to a college. And um, she she organized our decision day um, for our students where they all come together in the cafeteria in May and, um, and they get to announce where they're going to, to school. And, and she's so wise because she, she includes all the students in their post-secondary plans. It might not be a four-year college, it might not be a two-year college, it might be the military, uh, and there were lots of other things thrown in there as well. Well, we celebrate students and their plans for after high school. And uh, I just want to thank you for everything you've done and uh, what you've meant uh, to us. She is off to grad school. Uh, it's gonna do an awesome job there. But I just want to thank you for everything you have done uh, for our school district and particularly for Lake County High School and how much that has meant to us and more importantly to our students. Thank you. Yeah. You want to say so a few actually, words? Actually, yes, thank you very much. It's been an honor to serve her at Lee County High School. The kids are amazing, parents are amazing, staff is incredible, but it's all about the kids, so I have some data I'd like to share with you. Um, 685 college applications were submitted this year with 513 acceptances. Coming from that, 73% of our senior class applied to college this year, which is astronomical for Lee Senior. Um, and 52% of them filed their FAFSA, <laughs> which is also a record-breaking number. That joke helped. Um, 16 are enlisting in the military. Two are actually doing their missions trip with the Latter-day Saints mm. community. Um, and then one is traveling to Spain to play soccer, hopefully earning a spot on a professional football team. Um, and yes, that is the gist, but our kids are pretty incredible. So thank you. Miss Lewis, you. don't go. I just want to say that um, I have a little time to talk to you after this, after your very good, great speech on that day. And I know wherever you go, uh, you're going to do great and you're going to be wonderful. You have, uh, you've contributed a lot to our school and uh, we hope uh, your next step, we're going to hear some good things and great things about you. And thank I'll you. say, you know, you're always welcome to come back, you know. <laughs> they, they, that can just be a detour. That can just be a detour on your way back to Lee County. Right. Thank you very much. 
I told her not to go. But <laughs> but when she told when she told me the opportunity that she has to go to NYU, I said, you can go. go. Then you come back. <laughs> go with our grace. We Thank certainly you. wish you the best in your next career. Defect is she went to Duke. She's a Duke. Yeah. She's a Duke. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Mr. Chair, um, this time I'd like to uh, ask Angel Mills to come forward. Um, Angel. Uh, is in charge of our ESL department and wears lots of different hats as well. Um, she has been working with our staff uh, over the last several months uh, and, and also it's been winding its way through our curriculum instruction committee uh, with our MTSS process, which is the foundation for what we're going to be doing with our strategic plan, which I know um, um, Ms. Livingston and Mr. Coble are very familiar with what she's getting ready to talk about. But what I thought uh, today we'd talk about is, uh, the foundation we've laid for a strategic plan, some of the next steps we're taking, and Angel could cover that, and y'all could answer any questions. I mean, ask any questions that you want. And answer them too, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I have a little. Um, can you all hear me? I can't really tell whether it's. Tilt it up. Just take it out and hold it. Oh. All right. Okay. You're tall. All righty. There you go. <laughs> and I just saw my face pop up there. This is great. <laughs> so. <laughs> Put your blinders on. <laughs> All right. So as Dr. Bryan said, my name is Angel Mills, and I'm the ESL director and also the MTSS coordinator for the district. Just wanted to let you guys um, get a little bit of information about what MTSS is and how it's uh, informing our strategic planning process uh, for the system. So I'm going to start with just a little bit of background knowledge. So MTSS is, uh, stands for a multi-tiered system of support. All districts and schools across the state of North Carolina are required to have a multi-tiered system of support system by 2020. So this is um, an effort not just by Lee County Schools but by the entire state uh, for school improvement, district improvement um, from the top, all the way from DPI, all the way down into the classroom level. So if you look at the slide, MTSS is a multi-tiered framework which promotes school improvement through engaging research-based academic and behavioral practices. It employs a systems approach using data-driven problem solving to maximize growth for all students. And uh, there are six critical components of North Carolina MTSS. These components provide the foundation for program planning and supporting all stakeholders in the work of continuous improvement and refinement of instruction curriculum and environment. The six pillars, and I'm not going to um, read them all to you, I'm hoping you can see them, but leadership, building the capacity and infrastructure for implementation, communication and collaboration, database problem solving, three-tiered instructional intervention models, and data evaluation. Those are the six components needed um, in order for a school to implement a multi-tiered system of support that supports teachers and students. This year we've had pilot schools um, go through their self-reflection and study year, as well as our district leadership. So um, in order to gain a better understanding of the task the state has asked us to undertake, we have taken a year to study MTSS, engage in self-reflection and self-evaluation, and identify areas of readiness and need where we will begin the work of building a multi-tiered system of support. In addition to district leadership, this year we have had three pilot schools, Eastley, Lee County High School, and Deep River who all volunteered to be part of the pilot program and take the first step by engaging in study. So you can see uh, some of the things that were involved in that readiness and sustainability um, study is um, 
working on understanding the professional development plan the state has laid out for us for MTSS, forming a common language and basic understanding of the uh, system of support, identifying district and pilot school beliefs about academics and behavior, gaining knowledge of those six components on the previous slide. Um, <coughs> And this year, uh, our district learning year, our goals were to recognize MTS as a school, excuse me, MTSS as a school improvement model with potential to support district strategic planning, to develop ways to establish common language and beliefs, to articulate the district's multiple layers of support to schools, and to prepare for growth and change. So um, we've taken a year to study and learn about ourselves so that we can better serve our schools, and the pilot schools have done the same so they can better serve their students and teachers. Um, the foundational and fundamental beliefs for North Carolina's MTSS are all subgroups can reach proficiency with current academic and behavior standards. Core instruction in reading, math, and behavior can be effective for the majority of our students. Supplemental instruction can ensure students achieve grade level benchmarks. And intensive instruction can ensure students growing toward achievement grade level standards or benchmarks. Um, and so one of the things that they ask us to do at the state level when we go to the trainings, they ask us to involve ourselves in belief work and to see where we are as far as what our perceptions and conceptions and perhaps misconceptions about students are and what they're able to do. And so you start there with what you believe so that you can um, then expand and figure out whether you're ready or your level of readiness to um, make change. Um, so um, North Carolina's framework works off of these four fundamental beliefs. And as part of that professional development process, which, um, <coughs> excuse me, we've gone through, we've analyzed our core beliefs as our first step. So we've gone through and taken uh, belief surveys at the district level, and the pilot schools have also taken them. And our um, schools that will be coming on next year are in the process of taking them. And they use that information at the school level to have um, candid conversations and discussion about what um, their staff is feeling about students and how those feelings affect the decisions we make. Um, so that's the uh, beginning of the study and we, our schools have gone through that and so have we. Um, NTSS is also squarely focused on strengthening the core instructional program for all students. This includes instruction, curriculum, and environment and encompasses the academic core as well as core behavioral and social emotional expectations for the school and the district. So, and we do that by providing a cascading system of support. And this system of support goes from the state level down. So there are people at, um, they've changed their name because they've redesigned. So it's Integrated Academic Behavior Systems um, Department and DPI. Let me make sure I've got it right. Integrated Academic and Behavior Systems. Um, they have um, coaches and coordinators and people that support us as district teams and give us resources so that we can then support schools. So um, cascading system of support. Since building an MTSS is such an integral part of school improvement planning and the state has provided districts and schools with outstanding resources and supports to aid in this effort, we discovered through our studies that not only could using an MTSS framework help our schools with their improvement planning, it could also help us at the district level with strategic planning and articulating our layers of support that we're providing to the schools. Using MTSS as a foundation, we believe we will be able to add clarity to district expectations and work more efficiently and effectively as collaborators and supports to our school administrators, teachers, students, and the community. Some of the prep work that has been done this year, you can see this long list of things that we've been uh, busy doing. Um, and I'll just read it off in case it's too small for some of you to see. So again, we uh, engaged in some belief study with our MTSS belief survey, which is a survey that's created by the state. Also, our pilot schools did a self-assessment of MTSS so they could figure out where they were, what their strengths were, and where they might like to get started with their improvement pro process. Uh, we reviewed several different programs and supports that could possibly help us as we um, do improvement planning, such as Educator's Handbook, which is a potential support for collecting behavior and social-emotional data, NC STAR, which provides um, 
a wealth of information about school improvement and district improvement planning, district strategic planning. It has great indicators and research base for each indicator and also provides um, support for districts to support and coach um, with um, school level teams for school improvement planning. Um, so we were looking at that as something that could help us. We've articulated the foundational elements of core instruction and shared those with all stakeholders at the school level. Um, the teacher working condition survey was completed. We've done an assessment inventory, an initiative inventory. We've um, had some three-tiered behavior support training. We've explored a common problem solving model. The special areas groups such as AIG, ESL, EC are working on defining core supplemental intens intensive supports to schools. You have to excuse me, I'm trying to get over a little cold, sorry. Um, lead teachers and instructional coaches, specialists are defining core supplemental and intensive supports. And we're using state tools for implementation. So they provide us with great milestones and markers along the way so that we can see, okay, w what's the direction we wanna go in and where are our stopping points where we can check and see if we're implementing things the way that they need to be implemented um, and keeping up with the timely fashion of doing that. And those, um, those markers are provided for us at the district level as well as at the school level. Um, so, yeah, that's what we've done so far with um, MTSS as a framework for helping us um, with strategic planning for our county. And um, we are at the point now where we're starting to look at how to develop the plan. So we've done all of this footwork, all of these um, studies and, and looking at ourselves, gathering information. And now we're at the point where we're gonna be starting writing probably this summer. And if I might interject something at that point, we're hopeful to have that for the July 31 retreat. retreat. Okay. A um, couple of questions. You said that the state provides a, a list of benchmarks and so forth. Yeah. Are those benchmarks for implementation or are they benchmarks for outcomes? They're implementation milestones. Implementation benchmarks. Yes. Implementation milestones. So um, just with, as with any kind of change movement, you're trying to find something that will kind of give you a compass. Mm -hmm. um, a direction to go in so that you know you're taking some steps toward your end goal. Um, so the full implementation is required by the state by 2020. Mm -hmm. We're hoping to have our plan, you say, by j end of July. Yes. Um, at which point will we know our, our, I guess, our benchmark start point? What, what measures are we trying to improve district-wide? Is that disciplinary? Is it academic? Well... Okay, so MTSS can be used as a foundation and a framework for district strategic goal planning setting. or goal setting. Right. Um, but at the school level, each school is really looking at themselves. That's where they spend a lot of time in self-study. Um, they really dig deep into how is my school doing and where are the issues that we're having and where are places that we're really rocking it. And from that, they decide what they need to put in their individual plans and then at the district level, we're looking more globally. So, you know, we, we might see some things that, you know, that's really an issue. We need to do something about that. Let's write our strategic plan around some of those things because these other things, we're really rocking it. We just need to keep doing what we're doing. It sounds very similar to the QEP process at the, at the community college level. Um, I guess what I want to ensure is that the data, even down to the school le level, is archived for longitudinal study. Yes. So that you can say in 2017, this is where we were. In 2018, we had yes. implementation. In 2019, we're in you know, pilot. And, and so that we can track yes. data over a long term. I'm assuming that's kind of. It's a huge piece of MTSS. To the collection of data, the evaluation of the data, the analysis, um, and tracking over time. Not even like just kind of the big picture of all students, but down to your individual students. How are they really doing and keeping up with their progress and making sure that the system is working for them. I think uh, so it ties in with EVOS kind of. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. think, uh, I think uh, you've done a good job and I feel like uh, during the retreat, the board members will have more time to, to delve into whatever they want to. If nobody has any question, I want to move forward. That, that what you talked about at each school level, what they see is rocking and not rocking. Is that something we'll see at the retreat? Their review of themselves? Um, 
Not necessarily. Um, their school belief survey is for their school. And like I said, we just started with three pilot schools. Um, the rest of the schools are just going to be getting started. So it really is a, a really deliberate and kind of deliberately slow <laughs> process. So pilot schools went through a whole year or so study. Next year, they'll start to implement the things that they saw were needs at their school. This coming year will be a study for all the rest of the schools that are coming on. Then the next year, they'll begin to implement. How so many new schools will be added on next year? Everybody else except for those three. three that we okay, mentioned. that's what I thought yeah. you said. I was like, everybody <laughs> else. So we went through our growing pains year this year, learning together. <laughs> but um, next year, everybody will come on board to study, and then the following year, everybody should be implementing so that we're all ready by 2020. Good job. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. So that's that's uh, the strategic plan. Thank you, Angel. Thank you. My, you work well with the mic there. It's <laughs> good. It's very good. Next time I'm going to make sure it stands up tall enough for you. Another item, uh, Mr. Chair, that uh, I have on the uh, the agenda is the uh, last couple months. I know uh, uh, Mr. Kelly and, and uh, C&I Committee, Ms. Livingston, Mr. Coble, and uh, Calendar Committee have been talking about a lot of different ideas with Calendar. And uh, I just want to turn it over to Mr. Kelly to, to share his thoughts on where we are with, uh, with some discussions we've been having regarding the 2018-2019 calendar. Thank you, Dr. Bryan. I'm first grateful to Dr. Livingston for inviting me to your committee and giving me the time to speak. And we attended each CNI committee for each level of schools. And then we had two calendar committee meetings, um, first for feedback from our schools and the second to uh, for more feedback and to take a vote. Um, I'll say this, that when it comes to any decision I make, I make it because I want to be able to lay my head down at night and feel comfortable doing it. That being said, with the recommendation from the calendar committee being 7-4 in favor of the committee, I can't be happy with myself and bring a full recommendation to this board without hearing from the other schools. We were missing several schools from the calendar committee, and I can't, again, fulfill my duties to bring it before to this board without hearing from those. So I would at this point like to table that discussion about the calendar committee that we had for next year adding work days until we are able to hear from those schools. Um, that's the small representation. To me, I'm not comfortable enough until I hear from the other schools. So I'd make a motion. I don't think if you got me a motion, I just would feel like we should table it till the coming year. Yeah, Mr. Kelly, I, I, I don't think it requires a motion because right. we, we have the calendar to force that, that, we've, that this board has voted on already. So, uh, but – that's one reason why I'm not pushing it any forward is to be fair to all schools, every school has the right to have their voice heard. And at this time, I don't feel comfortable moving forward on it. Thank you. Uh, accountability update. Of course, we've ended the school year, and uh, we'll be um, having a lot of things going on this summer, from summer schools to um, extra camps and different things, and it's – uh, before you know it, middle of July will be here and Tramway will be starting up for year-round school and then the early college and everything in between. So, um, so we're, we're, we're going to take a, <laughs> a, a brief little break, if you can even call it that, and we're, we're off and going again. So that concludes my report. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Superintendent, at this time I will – go to the uh, curriculum committee. We have a committee uh, commi uh, reports now. Curriculum first. Uh, good evening, Mr. Chair. The elementary school CNI committee met at Greenwood Elementary School in the Media Center on May 9, 2018 at 3.30 p.m. John Conway opened up by acknowledging Teacher Appreciation Day, thanking all of the teachers for, for all they do. I, too, want to thank all the teachers and staff uh, for a wonderful year and let them know how much I appreciate the work they do for all those students in Lee County along with Dr. Coble. We all want to say thank you. Best practice presentation on intervention was presented by Katie Harris, the intervention teacher at Greenwood Elementary School. Ms. Harris states that one of Greenwood's major success stories is a first grader that began the year as a non-reader and not being able to identify numbers to 10. Through 
through uh, Tier 2 and Tier 3 interventions in both reading and math, the first grader is now adding and subtracting two-digit numbers and reading grade-level text. W.B. Wicker uh, STEAM School Pre-K through 5th grade had its groundbreaking ceremony on May 17th at 10.30 a.m. The ceremony was attended by many W.B. Wicker alumni students and local dig uh, dignitaries. Many thanks to uh, Brick Capital Videos for capturing all the history and the videography formation and also to the Sanford Hurl for its coverage in the newspaper. The high school uh, CNI met on May 30th, 2018 at the central office uh, in the assembly room. Gary Hart presented the 2018-2019 calendar, uh, career and technical education plan. The Curriculum and Instructions Committee recommends the approval of the CTE plan that is currently on the board consent agenda for June 10, 2018, which is tonight. During the current school year CNI committee meetings, I have asked the principals and staff to go back and encourage their teachers using such words as motivation, fabulous, awesome, phenomenal reading challenge, celebrate reading, positive and uplifting. As we all know, words are the most powerful drug used by mankind. Words and phrases have the ability to inspire, motivate, persuade, discourage, encourage, and so on. With words, teachers have the ability to plant seeds of success or failure in the minds of our precious students. Using encouraging words can help to change a student's motivational habits and aid in improving grades. Encouraging one another with our words plants the seed of greatness in our hearts. Mr. Chair, this concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you very much. At this time, we'll go to facility and uh, technology. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the Facilities and Technology Committee made on, met on May 22nd at 4 o'clock. We had a, a fairly slim agenda. Uh, the first item, uh, it was a consensus of the committee to approve a one-year contract with Toshiba Business Solutions. Uh, it was thought that since a new elementary school will be coming on board next year, next year would be a better year to consider a longer term uh, a contract for uh, this, this uh, service. Uh, this obviously, it will be under the consent agenda. Uh, it was also the con consensus of the committee to award a two-year central office postage meter bid to ANZA mailing, mailing systems, and this will be also under the uh, board of uh, the uh, uh, consent agenda. We had a brief discussion on uh, clearing some uh, fields, uh, some woods ar around uh, Lee County uh, campus, uh, particularly for security purposes. Um, we had a brief discussion and it was decided to ask Chris McNeil, our maintenance director, to look at uh, perhaps clearing some uh, woods between uh, the baseball field and the football field uh, that might uh, improve our security uh, here on this campus. That was the uh, end of our meeting and our next meeting will be on Tuesday, June the 26th at 4 o'clock. Thank you. We go to finance. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, the Finance Committee pretty much mirrored what the uh, Facilities and Technology Committee uh, uh, did. We uh, voted to uh, extend the one-year extension for Toshiba and uh, also the postage machine re renewal. They both required approval by both committees, and uh, that was the extent of our agenda. We will meet next on uh, Tuesday, the 26th of June at 5 o'clock. Thank you. At this time, we'll go to the... Uh, Policy Committee. Mr. Chair, the Policy Committee met on May 15th. We had three policies that were held over from the prior meeting. It was determined by the committee that no additional action need be taken on Policy 2010. However, uh, some changes were addressed to Policy 5005 and 8310. That's the Public Information Program and the Annual Independent Audit. As uh, we had drafted the wording to incorporate into these two policies, we felt it uh, incumbent upon us to pass it through the attorney prior to bringing it before the board. And so upon his review, it was recommended that we put those two forward on first reading this evening. We also had a, a fairly brief discussion on policy code 3410 testing and assessment program. A new regulation had come down from the state and it had to be in place for the testing that was taking place essentially the week later. 
and so it regarded how the end of grade testing was calculated into a student's final grade. Because it was a regulation, it does not require a board vote, but because of history, the it's kind of the policy of the district to inform us when there has been a change to a regulation. And so policy code 3410 uh, is simply kind of an FYI. 3410. Okay. And uh, I'm sorry, our June meeting has been canceled for a lack of information from the state board of uh, the state board and barring any unforeseen circumstances, we will reconvene in August. Okay. Thank you, sir. Okay. Any question? Yes, sir. Uh, from any board member about the about the uh, what do you call it, the amendment to policy uh, thirty not thirty four ten the uh, the public information. Yes, sir. What's your question? I was just asking about members. Do you have any questions? Oh, now? I'm sorry. I thought you said you had a question. Yes. So you're amending what is there now. It's the public information policy. It was an addition of the steps to take to establish a point of contact for public records request and a procedure by which those requests are handled. What's wrong with what we had before? It was never in a policy. There was no stated policy that said how we handle public records administration. And then basically the steps there are the ones that align with the state statute regarding our requirements to maintain public records requests, that they are, the, the act of making a public records request is a public record itself and that the board should be made aware when information is requested so that we don't get blindsided uh, by questions from media or elsewhere. And so it's a step-by-step -step process. And we did a great deal of research to look at different ways that different um, school systems had done this in the past. And we spoke with Ms. Spence about what her process was and codified basically what we do. Point of clarification, are you in the um, new business section? Did you jump down to new business? No, I, I'm just still discussing the, still giving you yeah, I'm discussing the report of what we discussed in that session. We're not voting at this point. Okay. 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 That's all right. So that's the end of. Uh, yes, that it concludes my report on the policy meeting. Thank you. The next thing is uh, the uh, consent agenda. I need a motion. Mr. Chair, I make a motion we approve the consent agenda. We have a motion. We need a second. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 The consent agenda is approved. Now we're going to the uh, unfinished business. Board policies, second reading. Mr. Chair, we have these several policies holding out after first reading. There's been no further comment upon them. So at this time, the committee moves that the Lee County Board of Education approve the second reading of the following policies. Policy 1710 slash 4021 slash 7230. Am I on the wrong place? Yes, uh, is that where I am? Second reading. Second reading. Yes, okay, that's okay, that's okay. Um, I'll just start over. I move that Lee County Board of Education approve the second reading of the following policies, 1710-4021 slash 7230, policy 1720 slash 4015 slash 7225, policy 3200, policy 3565 slash 8307, policy 4301 slash 4316, policy 4316 slash 4301, apparently we have that one uh, cross-referenced twice. 4328, 4400, 5010, 5070 slash 7350, policy 6220, 6420, 6421, 7100, 7240, 7410, 8220, 8300, 8325, 8510, 9125, and the repeal of policy 9135. Question. Most of these changes, most of these changes are just coming from the state, correct? Correct. 
motion to approve the second readings of the policies mentioned before. The motion comes from committee. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. So we need to vote. Yeah, the, the, vote. yeah, the motion comes from the committee okay. in the second reading. Okay. Have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 We have a the motion is approved. The next is the new business, the first reading. Mr. Chair, I make the uh, a move that the Lee County Board of Education approve the first reading of policies 3410, 5005, and 8310. Second. Mr. Chairman, I would like to make a substitute motion, please. Okay. Uh, I would like to uh, move that we approve policy 3410 for first reading as requested, and that policies 3310 and 5005 remain unchanged and come off of that uh, motion. Second. Uh, clarification is 8310. Uh, 8310 and 5005. Is it 310? Um, we would come off and we would approve on first reading 3410. We will approve first reading for 3410. Okay. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor say aye. Discussion. If these are coming from the State Board Association because they're highlighted in yellow, would that not be going against what the State Board Association? It's my no. understanding, Mr. Kelly, that this is not coming from the State Board it's Association. Did you read it? This, uh, this arose after a concern from a board member that public information requests were being received and not uh, communicated to the members of the board and or not responded to in a timely manner. Um, at the time that we received as a committee that request, we began to discuss how it is handled and to research where the information is housed for the public's benefit so that they know to whom to address a public records request and then what happens to it after that time. Um, noticing that there was no such designation within our policy as currently written, the policy committee drafted, discussed over a, gosh, three month period to establish these six guidelines. Um, those were approved by the meeting of the committee. They were reviewed by our attorney as in line with the state requirements and with law. At this time, the committee felt it necessary to designate and to outline the step-by-step -step request to ensure transparency and fluidly moving information between the central office and this board of education. We the policy, the committee will stand by its recommendation of the original uh, policy as written. We have a we have a vote. Uh, uh, we have a, a motion and a second. Let's vote on on uh, the motion that we have. We have we have Could two motions and two seconds. Yeah, I think. But we vote on the first one. We have to vote on the substitute on the motion. First. You have to on vote the on the substitute motion yes, first. Correct. Substitute, correct. Yes, that's what I'm saying. On the substitute motion. How many are? Please, I, um, please repeat the substitute motion, please. Mr. Chair, I move for a an amendment to the substitute motion, if that's possible, from Dr. Smith. I would recommend that we the, we separate the policy 5005 uh, and the separate it from the policy 8310 to make those two separate discussions. No, I won't agree to that. Okay, let's let's uh, vote on uh, on uh, the uh, the last uh, the last one with Dr. Smith. Mr. Chair, are we finished with discussion? Because I would like to know why, sir, on the policy committee, as we as we are trying to open ourselves for transparency within the organization. We have multiple incidents where the board is not informed of things from when we are when the school has been given. Um, public information request, which we are entitled to, and should definitely know in order to be better informed to serve our community and our constituents. Now, I think that it's fair that in my board, our board, our policy board, while being a guest in another board committee, I'm told you can't speak, you can't do anything. On this committee that we put several hours and days into, I would like to know why and what is the discrepancy and that policy by the way, the policy states that if there is any public information request that comes to the school, that each school board is informed. 
And that's important, kind of like a lawsuit that we didn't know about for a year and a half. So that's why this policy is in place. And I would simply like to know the board members who are voting no to this policy, what is it, information is it that you do not want and why? Uh, Miss, uh, you can't question fellow board members. Let them do what Sir, you, uh, uh, we, in an we, open we, discussion, you have, me, you have a right. speaker against and you have the opportunity for someone to speak in favor of their motion. By Robert's rules of order, no one has spoken in favor of the motion that Dr. Smith has proposed. But you, you, we have a motion, we have a second. You don't have to, uh, you don't have to speak in favor of it anymore because you have a motion, you have a second. We have, a, we're ready for a vote. Okay, uh, let me see. Uh, hands up, e everyone in favor of uh, Dr. Smith's vote. If you are in favor of the of the motion. I, j I still want to know what the objection to the policy committee's decision is. You said what? I, I haven't heard an objection, really, to what the policy committee has put forth, other than we don't want to change it. The board what, said what, is the, what is the rationale for refusing to specify well, how a person sends a public records request? Well, first of all, my objection is this has been presented as coming from the State Board of uh, uh, School Board Association, and it is not. I didn't present so, it as so it from the state board. All, I've never said it came from the state well, it's, board. It's highlighted in yellow. That indicates it's coming from the school board association. Not it is association. not coming from the state board. So it's, it's being misrepresented in the first place. And in the second place, I think the policies that we have are quite adequate, and uh, I think we need to leave them as they are. I will say if it, is a, if it is designated in yellow as a state board change, that is an error on the part of our typist. Um, but no, I did not intend in any way to, to suggest that it came from the State Board. This is the work of your elected policy committee over a four-month period of time to uh, codify the process that this system is currently using. And that's why I don't understand the objection. Do you object with the way public records are handled currently? I think our and do you object to being told when a public records request comes in? I think our, our policies are quite adequate at the moment. and. Uh, and it's been misrepresented, and it should not be in yellow as when it's presented to the board for book for a vote. We have a we have a uh, we have a motion. We have a vote. Uh, let's uh, let's. Does I have uh, information. Um, seeing that this has the uh, North Carolina State Board Association, it says the changes are in yellow, and so you just stated that it this document did not come from the North Carolina State Board Association. Technically, uh, correct me if I'm mistaken. Um, if I'm mistaken, we can't vote on this because it says something different than what is actually being presented. So that means it should have been highlighted in blue. You so are correct. It should have been cannot, blue instead of we yellow. We cannot vote today on this particular document. I have no period. objection to tabling this and um, remanding it back to the policy committee to change the color from yellow to blue. But we still have a, uh, if not, we've drawn their, their motion. Sir, so if, we if we're uh, saying the policy is improperly written, then I don't see any reason uh -huh. to amend it. Mr. Uh, Chairman, there's a motion on back. the floor. It's yeah, time a motion. to vote. It's, we're moving on. We have a motion in, on the floor. All, all in favor of that motion, uh, raise your hand. Wow. Can the we get a repeat of the motion for the, the motion, record? The motion is approved. Uh, the uh, all those opposed, we need to all the up, all the one that's opposed to it. The committee that wrote it. Okay. <laughs> the motion is approved. Okay. Wow. <laughs> so the just to clarify, what just happened here is um, policy eighty three ten has been. Hang on, let me let me correct. I don't want to mistake myself. The Policy eighty three ten. We've eliminated the yellow, and on uh, policy five thousand and five, eliminate the yellow and keep it as it was. And then policy eighty. Um, I'm sorry, thirty five, oh, five, zero, zero, four ten was a was an information only. And so yes, five, thank oh, you very oh, much. Five. Yes, thank you. We're moving forward. <coughs> we have uh, the uh, CCCC uh, trustee appointment.
like a like a motion uh, to approve. Uh, we got a letter. I got a letter from uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Chief Post wanting to continue. He was appointed by this board, and he wanted to continue serving on the uh, CCCC Board of Trustee. And um, can I uh, have a, a motion for Mr. Post? Okay. Mr. Chairman, I, I nominate uh, Mr. Chip Post to continue in his, his uh, role as a uh, member of the, trust of the Board of uh, Directors. Mr. Chair, I nominate Martha Underwood. Okay. For the CC trustee appointment. We, we have a nomination first. We need a, a second for the nomination for Mr. Post. Second. Uh, Mr. Kobo uh, supported uh, Mr. Uh, Post uh, nomination. We have a second. Uh, then Ms. Uh, Ms. Womack, we need uh, Yes, sir. I'd like to nominate Martha Underwood we for have the CCC Mart trustee. We have a, a motion for Martha Underwood. We need a second for Martha Underwood. Second. Okay, we have a second from Martha Underwood. So we're going to vote on the uh, on this. Point of information, when was the vacancy uh, publicly announced for the CCCC board? When were applications accepted? We don't have, since we have an appointment, we have a, a since I haven't known anybody that got reelected by acclamation. I think you still have to have a, a vacancy announcement to go out. We have a vacancy. Uh, we didn't have a vacancy because it's a it's a, a board that is appointed by three. Uh, Correct. By by three uh, uh, what do you call it? Three counties. I understand so, that. So and uh, if he resigned, we will have uh, advertise it and bring it to the board. But he didn't resign. He wanted to continue. So it will ha have to be the board say yes or no. So we have uh, the. Uh, Sir, I have one more point of information. Did the other three counties not do an announcement? Mrs. Mrs. Womack, I'm, just a point not, of information. I'm not interested in what the other counties do. I'm <laughs> interested in what we do here. Okay. I'm interested so in following the law, can sir. I, can I continue? You are getting out of order now. Let's let's vote on what we have. Uh, we have a, a vote. Uh, we want to vote. Uh, uh, all the people in favor of Mr. Post, uh, raise up your hand to be to continue. What you post? We have four. All people in favor of uh, Miss Underwood to call, uh, to uh, we have two. Okay. You have one abstention. We have one abstention. Okay. So, Mr. Post will continue uh, serving and on the board of trustee of the community college. That's due to my day job. Okay. Mm -hmm. You. He works for the community college, so he can vote. I understand that. Okay. At this time, uh, we have a uh, Lee County. Uh, Board of Education uh, Calendar Committee. Superintendent. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, what you have in front of you, I believe the calendar of events for next year. Anybody has any questions? or? I'd like to know if we're going to add the man and woman of the year in there because we, for the last two years I've been on the board, we've had to change our meetings. So has that been calculated in there? Because I did not see that reflected. I, I have not calculated that in there. I'm not sure what that date is. So we need a motion. I make a motion we approve the calendar of events as presented. Second. second. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 The motion is approved. At this time, we need a motion to go into closed session. Mr. Chair, I make a motion that Lee County Board of Education go into closed session for the following purposes. To discuss information that is privileged, confidential, and not a public record under North Carolina General Statute 143.318.11A1 and to consult with our attorney in order to preserve their attorney-client privilege under North Carolina General Statute Section 143.318.11A3. We need a second. Second. We have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Okay. We're in closed session. A second. Motion to approve the personnel report as presented. Second. We have a motion. We have a second. All in favor say aye. 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 Motion to adjourn. Motion is approved. Second. second. <laughs> Third.
uh, the other motion is uh, to release the closed uh, yes. session yes. minutes. Motion to release the closed session minutes. We need a second. That whole list. That yes, whole the whole list. <laughs> the whole list. Okay, the whole list of uh, second closed session minutes. We have a second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Now I can entertain uh, a motion, motion to, to adjourn. adjourn. Second. Okay. Now the body is uh, adjourned. Aye.